I'm Mike DeLuca. Welcome to this rare In the Trenches look at the craft of screenwriting. Today I'm sitting here with Callie Corey, who penned the screenplay for the groundbreaking Thelma and Louise and received the Oscar for it. She also wrote the screenplay and directed Divine Secrets of the Yaya Sisterhood and also wrote the screenplay for Something to Talk About. She's currently working on a pilot with Stephen Bochco called Hollis and Ray, and we're very happy to have you here. Happy to be here. Did you study acting and did you study drama at Purdue? I did. And before that in high school, and decided I was going to be a landscape architect and then changed my major. That's how I ended up at Purdue. Why acting, first of all? Well, because I didn't know. I wanted to do something what, like what I'm doing now. And I didn't know about writing and I didn't know about directing. I thought when you wanted to create something fantastic, you were an actor. Hmm. Because that's where you see the, the result of everybody's work. Did you have acting influences kind of growing up? Did not, you actors? Not really. Mm -hmm. You know, I. I I got into high school plays. Okay. Um, you know, honestly, my, my father died when I was young, 16, and uh, I, I started doing plays because I needed to not be at home at night, and mm -hmm. you could go to rehearsals and things like that, and it was just a, a way of kind of dealing with the grief of that loss mm -hmm. and having something to throw myself into, and I really enjoyed it. When did you know you were going to try your hand at writing? Right before I did it. That, I never aspired to it, or I, I, I think I should say I secretly aspired to it and never had the confidence to actually attempt it. But it was an inner, kind of an inner ambition? I think it was the thing that I respected almost more than anything else. I think it was the thing I felt was furthest away from my natural abilities. Okay. Do you think any of your experiences in terms of what you took from the acting training and classes translated into uh, helpful things for your writing? I do. I think that you know, when I was acting, I thought the, the thing that was most difficult about it was the, the myriad of choices that were available to an actor as that character. And I always wanted it to be narrowed down for me. I was just like, please tell me exactly why this person is saying this. Mm -hmm. And so I do try to build that into my own writing. Can you fill us in on the, the production work you did on commercials and uh, music videos? Well... <laughs> I did a lot in the 80s, in the early 80s. In the 80s. Everyone yes. did uh, yes. music videos in That's the 80s. That's right. That's how we all got started. How did you come to music videos? I started working as a receptionist at a music video and commercial production company and just kind of worked my way up. I literally started as a receptionist and then was a production, a, a runner, a production assistant, production coordinator, mm. production manager, then right. producer. It's amazing how many things they can put production in front of to That's describe right. a job. It's all hard work. Did any of that experience help? With the writing. I don't think I could have written had I not had that experience. All right. And how come? Because I learned so much about how to get an image on film and how to tell a story in a frame from doing that. And it was weird because it was almost like learning narrative by the opposite example mm -hmm. because it, music video was so abstract. Well, that's so interesting because music videos are so derided sometimes for being cutsy and, right. and quick, and, but it actually helped your knowledge of screenplay structure. Absolutely. I mean, because you, you do, it starts to become so apparent that all you have in the world to tell the story is what's happening when that shutter is open. Right. And so it really does make you focus. Do you find writing certain characters easier than writing other ones? What's, what's, what's a difficult character for you to write? I think the, the times that I have the most trouble is when I'm having to do something for a studio where they're seeing something that I'm not seeing. And is it hard to get on the same page at the beginning or do they change their mind through the process? You know, I, I liken it to the, this experience, and that is somebody will say, I want you to write a story about my mother. <laughs> and it doesn't matter what you do. It's never going to be their mother. Right. It's going to be your mother or your friend's mother or somebody you know. It's not going to be the experience for them. And they want you to write an experience that, that's closer to something they experienced, and it's just impossible. Is, there, is writing ever easy for you? There are those rare moments that it is, and that's... <clears throat> well, for instance, Thelma and Louise was actually very easy. It was um, one of those times where I would sit down and there it would be. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I go for long periods of time in, in between where there's nothing, you know, where you wait for the characters to speak to you as right. easily as those characters spoke to me. But writing this pilot, the same thing happened again, where I, I was actually doing a rewrite for a studio and in between writing this pilot. And it would take me 
10 days to write one page mm -hmm. on the rewrite and one day to write 10 pages on the pilot. So can we discuss a scene uh, that, that you picked as a particularly strong example of your work? I think anyone would argue it's a, it's a knockout scene. It's a very gut-wrenching scene of uh, Thelma and Louise you know, stopping at the trucker bar and, and Thelma going off with Harlan, I believe, who ends up being you know, uh, the person who, who, who tries to rape her. Right. And the scene builds and builds and builds, and finally Louise comes to her rescue and ends up shooting Harlan. I, I knew that whatever happened, it was going to have to be something from which there was never going to be a road back to a normal life. And so it was going to have to be something as monumental as a murder, mm -hmm. as an un, unjustified murder, mm -hmm. or uh, an emotionally justified mm -hmm. murder. Right, but not provable in yeah, court. As a, yes, yeah. exactly. That there would be absolutely no recourse for them but to put them in jail for the rest of their lives, no matter what. Did you draw from any, you know, God forbid, but did you draw from any real life experiences in terms well, of being trapped in a corner or, or, or feeling that kind of pressure from, from a character? You know, more than, than that particular thing, what I drew from was, I spent years waiting tables and working in bars and waitressing and then all the years in music videos right. and things like that. The and, things that yeah. you are witness to sure. on a daily basis are so appalling mm -hmm. that, and, and that you, what your response is, is supposed to be is don't say anything. Right. Just don't talk back. You know, because, and, and by that, by that being you know, the required response, blankness, nothing, you're acknowledging that there's an implied threat in it. So you're walking around all the time with people feeling free to say anything to you that crosses their mind, no matter what. Yeah. But I, I think the thing, I, the personal experience that I drew from was one day when I was walking down the street, an old man from a car said something to me that was so vile that I had the thought, if I had a gun, I would kill him. Mm-hmm. And just the, the thought of realizing the rage that bubbled up in me at that moment and knowing that if <laughs> I happened to have had a gun, right. I would have committed a murder right then. Wow. That there was nothing in me that would have stopped me. That's how mad I was. Wow. And I said when I was writing this, that is, a, that is an amazing feeling that a person who is a, living their life, a normal person by every other standard, that a, a series of events can come together and you're capable of doing things that you would never th believe possible. You're, you're shining a light on what is dysfunctional. Well, those are the things that are interesting to me. Yeah. You know, uh, and it's weird too, because you know, the way the world is right now, it's very difficult to be a screenwriter in Hollywood and feel like you know, the opportunity to work in the business and do anything important right. that those two things will ever intersect. It's almost impossible. You know, I, you also have to kind of come to grips with the fact that, you know, the business is not in that place right now. Right. You know, so there's the work of working for studios and then there's that thing of looking, you know, what good can I do? Right. What can I do that's going to make a difference to anyone, right. you know, including myself? Mm -hmm. You know, I think that everybody who, who aspires to be an artist on any level is dealing with the same thing. There's so much suspense in that sequence too. Like, is that something you could write on the page or you know how do you how do you transmit the thought that this is supposed to be suspenseful when you're writing the script? Again, I think that's where economy comes in. Mm -hmm. You know, it's you, you have to choose your sentences very carefully. And I think the description is every bit as important as the dialogue and those things. And I th always say that you know when I'm writing, I really try to see the whole thing with no dialogue first so that the dialogue that I put in or the description that I put in is only what's absolutely necessary to tell the story. Mm -hmm. You know, so I try to be as economical as possible and just not give any information until the exact moment that it's needed mm -hmm. or not say anything that isn't absolutely necessary.